One dividend growth stock that is truly trading right at its 52 week lows. When I don't talk about a whole lot, but it's Nike stock ticker NKE trading at $90.94 per share. And the past year has been a rough one for them down around 26.37%. And we can see year to date down around 16.24%. So in this video, we're going to be analyzing Nike stock, taking a deep dive into the stock and seeing if it's trading at a good value. So let's go ahead and begin now. Why is Nike stock down? Now let's go ahead and jump into my stock screener spreadsheet and start breaking this down. And like always, you can download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet by heading over to tickerdata.com. But let's go ahead and come up here and plug in NKE and hit enter. And immediately all this data will automatically load in. Now at first glance, everything seems to be pretty solid. We can see revenue per share has grown quite a bit over the past decade, going from around $14.11 all the way up to $33.01. Free cash flow per share has done a good job growing, going from it looks like around $133 to around $3.14. Now obviously 2020 was a bad year for the company, but that was the case for a lot of companies and especially retailers. And earnings per share, similar story, we've seen good growth over the past decade. If we look at shares outstanding, we can see they are buying back shares. That's a good sign. We did see a jump up in the debt to assets ratio in 2020, but overall it doesn't necessarily look like it's in a dangerous position, but it is worth noting that is a big spike up. And then return on invested capital has declined slightly over the past few years, but it's not necessarily in an unhealthy position. So when I glance at this stock screener, I don't see anything that really justifies the huge sell off in Nike so far. But let's go ahead and keep digging in. Let's jump over to the profitability and income statement spreadsheet. Again, we've already touched on earnings per share. But if you look at revenue versus cost of revenue, it looks like revenue is growing at a healthy rate and cost of revenue is staying consistent as well. So that gross profit ratio really isn't changing a whole lot. We can see it's pretty much in line with the 10 year average of 44.67 and in 2023 gross profit ratio 43.52. Again, for more mature companies, we do like to see consistent gross profit ratios. So I don't really see anything of concern right here. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward and look at our dividend breakdown spreadsheet. You can see I've already plugged in NKE right here. Now we're currently looking at yearly dividend payouts right here and it looks like they had a dividend cut but really what happened was a stock split now we can easily account for this with ticker data if we come up here and plug in adjusted dividend and hit enter you can see this chart down here will now automatically update and show the quarterly dividend payouts over the past few years so it's grown quite a bit it's gone from around 12 cents per share all the way up to 37 cents per share so over the past decade quarterly dividend payouts have really been increasing at a pretty high rate it's a pretty good thing to see now the starting dividend yield is pretty low sitting at about 1.63 percent but again dividend growth has been good now something else we have to take note of payout ratio sitting at about 40 percent and free cash flow payout ratio around 41 percent overall that's a pretty healthy range for the company and if we look at the free cash cash flow payout ratio over time, with the exception of 2020 when obviously it was much higher than it typically ever is, a free cash flow payout ratio of around 40% is pretty much in line with its historic average. So if we come down here and look at the free cash flow versus dividends paid, we can see free cash flow has been easily covering those dividend payments with the exception of 2020. Now here is one potential concern I have for the company. Free cash flow growth is not quite as high as I'd like to see it. We can see the 10 year free cash flow CAGR sitting at about 7.38 and the 5 year free cash flow CAGR around 4.41%. Now when we talk about Nike, we're talking about a company that has an extremely strong and loyal customer base. And let's just go ahead and put that into perspective. In a recent survey, 1,164 US people were polled and they said that Nike was one of their favorite sneaker brands with Adidas coming in second. And if we look at the total athletic footwear US brand share, Nike, and of course, remember they also own Jordan, is absolutely dominating. And now if we look at the worldwide footwear sales of selected sports brands in 2022, we can see Nike came in at 29.1 billion, more than double of the second place contender Adidas at 13.1 billion. So Nike is absolutely dominating worldwide footwear sales. And then here's something else I found very interesting. If we look at the social media accounts of Nike versus their peers, and we look at the followers and the amount of likes they receive, Nike is absolutely dominating. And this is just a testament to their strong brand and loyal customer base. So again, what is with the sell off of Nike as of right now? Where there's a couple of other things we have to note. And there's a good point here. Since the pandemic, Nike has lost share to smaller running folks brands. And in another recent poll, we can see there was a declining number of teens who identify themselves as sneakerheads, down 80 basis points year over year to around 24% 
And we can also see they're spending 3% less overall as COVID tailwinds and inflationary pressures remain. And like I mentioned just a moment ago, we can see other brands are gaining market share like New Balance, On Running, and Asics. And I'm not a huge sneakerhead myself, but this is something I've started to notice out in public as well. I'm starting to see these other brands more and more often. So yes, Nike does have a very strong customer brand like other companies like Starbucks, but as we've seen as of late, that might not be enough in the current market conditions. They've recently been losing some market share and they do have pretty expensive items. So I personally think there's a lot of concern in the market right now that current economic conditions, inflation, and higher Nike prices are going to hurt the sales for Nike moving forward. Now with that being said, with them trading at a 52 week low, does this create opportunity? To find out, let's just go ahead and jump over to my stock valuation spreadsheet. We'll come up here, plug in NKE and hit enter. And we can see all this data is going to automatically load in. Now, Nike currently sitting on a beta of 1.08. So you'll see a little bit more volatility than that of the market average. Now, typically the first valuations we focus on are going to be grams valuation and a discounted cash flow analysis model. But in the case of Nike, something I want to do is I want to look at a reverse discounted cash flow analysis. And essentially what this does is it tells us how much free cash flow growth is currently priced into the stock at its current share price. So we come down here, we can see the current price for Nike is sitting at $90.94. With a 0% free cash flow growth rate, we can see their share price would be sitting at about $43.69. So again, we wanna find out how much growth is priced into this stock. If we put it at around 7%, it jumps up to around $73.78. 8% $79.41 but if we put it at 9.85% it comes out to being very close to the current share price so this tells us at its current prices there's currently around 9.85% free cash flow growth priced into Nike stock so now that we have this number the question we have to ask ourselves is is this number justified and remember if we jump over to our dividend breakdown spreadsheet one of the things we can see over the past 10 years their free cash flow CAGR has been sitting at about 7.38 percent and over the past five years it's actually been even a little bit slower at about 4.41 percent now we have to keep in mind within the past year alone, this was a company trading as high as around $121, $122 per share. So if we go back over to our reverse DCF model and plug in around 14% free cash flow growth, we can see reverse DCF price per share $122. That means at a certain point this year, there was around 14% free cash flow growth priced into this stock. Again, that seems like it's a little bit on the high end. So again, if you're someone interested in Nike, you have to ask yourself, do you think they can achieve that free cash flow growth rate? Now, moving forward on our valuation, if we go ahead and jump over to the multiples valuation, I'll go ahead and zoom in quite a bit. But essentially what we're doing is we're seeing how the market is valuing comparable companies to Nike. We're taking their stock price dividing by our earnings per share to get that price to earnings multiple and the PE multiples for these companies are already kind of all over the place but the average sitting at about 23.67. So if we apply Nike's earnings per share to that average price to earnings multiple, we come to an intrinsic value of around $77.41, a decent bit lower than that current trading price. But now if we go over to our dividend discount model, I'll go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. But again, we're valuing the company based on how much dividends they're currently paying out and how much that dividend will increase in the future. So we can see pretty decent dividend hikes from this company over the past four years, around 12%, 11%, 11%, and around 6.5%. So moving forward, I'm projecting a dividend growth rate of around 7%, discount rate of 8.5%, and that gives us a dividend discount model price per share of around $105.57, a little bit higher than that current trading price. So when we jump over to our output tab, we can see the two valuations we use, the multiples valuation at 77.41 and the dividend discount model at around $105.57. And if we average these two together, we come to an intrinsic value of around $91.49, pretty close to that current trading price for this company. And with a 10% margin of safety, we could see an acceptable buy price of around $82.34. So in my opinion, I actually think this company might be trading pretty close to fair value. If we jump back over to Seeking Alpha, we can see the company currently has a forward price to earnings of around 25.14, which again, yes, they do have a strong consumer brand, but that is a relatively high price to earnings multiple. I think the reality of Nike stock is just a lot of people have concerns about the current economic conditions and consumer spending. When we look at the long-term fundamentals of the company, again, there is a lot to like, but again, I think people have concerns of future headwinds. But there you go. There is an analysis of Nike currently trading at a 52-week low. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.